Lacey Mosley, welcome to the Livewire House Party. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Come on, House Party. <laughs> right? We are so happy to have you here. We're big fans, mm -hmm. uh, both uh, of the uh, sketch show and also your podcast, which I want to talk about in a minute. First, though, I want to find out, like, what life was like for you as a kid growing up in Dallas? Were you mm. into comedy? Were you and your friends like making sketches and recording them on your phones or whatever? Like, what, what was that like for you? Oh, yes. I've always been into comedy. I told my mother when I was five that I wanted to be an actor. And um, she got me some headshots. And, honey, I was at the mall trying to get involved in every scam. Okay, John Robert Powers, Barbazon. Barbazon on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Little Lacey was going to be there, honey. Okay. I was like, we heard this on the radio. We heard it become a star tomorrow. Um, so. Did you book anything? Like, were you in some local, like, Dallas stuff? Well, my mom actually didn't want me to be a professional actor at five. She kind of was like, yeah. And then she was like, girl, I don't want you to be out here on drugs, child. So we're going we gonna <laughs> to let you wait. And and I, look, there's plenty of well-adjusted actors who were child actors and child stars. But there's also a lot who, you know, went through the dark sides of Hollywood. So I appreciated my mom wanting to protect me. And also knowing that I was the type of kid who was probably go fall for it. <laughs> she, knew, <laughs> she knew what kind of child she raised. So she was like, Lisa, we're going to let you get older and more mature. Um, so I just mostly took classes and would film fun videos with my friends um, that were absolutely ridiculous. And um, I did theater my entire life. So, yeah. Then you got to L.A. eventually. And I know you uh, were part of Upright Citizens Brigade, which is uh, mm -hmm. one of the big like improv places in L.A. One of the things I've always wondered about that, everyone talks about like classes. I'm taking classes at UCB. What are you mm -hmm. learning in those classes about how to be a better improviser, performer, how to get funnier? Like, what's the curriculum of those classes? Um, it's, it's a lot of math, which, like, mm. you're not actually doing physical huh. math, but it's learning the math of comedy, you know, and how to use what you have to the best of your abilities. Huh. And so, you know, a lot of times we say comedy comes in threes. You know, you like, that's how you'll hit a joke or, you know, what or specificity. Like, that's the kind, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's a difference between being like, I was following you for three miles or I was following you in my four pencil with a diaper on for three miles. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, you know, so just learning like how to use what you have to the best of your abilities, which is why I love UCB, because they didn't try to make me something different. They were just like, what do you have? What can you bring to the table? And like, how can you use that? So, yeah, it was fun. So uh, what was it like for you getting a black lady sketch show? I mean, did you audition? Did they come see you at UCB? What was that like? Yeah, so it was crazy, actually, because I saw the first season and I was so excited to watch all these funny black women. But I was also like, wait a minute, I didn't even get an audition for this. Like, hold on. Or skr, skr. Um, <laughs> so, you know, immediately I was texting my agents like, if this comes back around, if they get a second season, like, I have to be in the room. Like, please, I don't care what we got to do. Um, you know, tell them I'm Gabrielle Union. And then when I show up, I, I'll, I just won't be like, we'll just scam them. You know what I mean? Like, whatever we got to do. So I was really excited when it came back around um, last Jan January 2020, um, around then. And I auditioned, and the audition was crazy. It was like I had to play, like, five characters talking to themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I was just, like, throwing my braids over my face and, like, doing accents. It was, like, crazy. <laughs> Did and, you have um, those, like, kind of accents and characters, like, ready to go from UCB? Or were you trying to, like, invent a bunch of stuff for the audition? I definitely had some some go to's from UCB and obviously like the whatever the material is guides you and how these characters are. Mm -hmm. um, so but I remember saying to my friend um, who helped me, Ruha, she's amazing. She helped me with this audition. I was like, there's no way that they're just going to call regular actresses to do like a four or five page audition. That's just you talking to yourself. And some something spoke to me and was like, maybe you should just go ahead and practice it. And of course I come in and that's exactly what they wanted. So oh, I was nice. like, Whew, I'm glad that like I was prepared. Um, but the crazy thing was, is that I usually I have a weird sixth sense about jobs. And like, mm. if I'm like, that's the right job for me, or like, I know that we vibed like, and I had that. So I reached out after the audition. And I was like, that's my job. So like, if they don't call, like, you know, we need to figure out why. And a couple of days go by, I didn't hear anything. And I text my managers and I was like, what happened? Like, I really thought I nailed it. And they, they were like, we're going to call you. So they call me and they tell me that they wanted me for the job. But unfortunately, because I was shooting this other show, Florida Girls, at the oh, time, yeah. there was a conflict. And so I couldn't do it. And I was crushed. 
and then cut to the pandemic, <laughs> 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 which um, we were right about to go shoot Florida Girls, and um, Tom Hanks got the Rona, and the NBA shut down. Yeah. And I was like, "Woo, well, child, pack it up." Um, that and was a like, crazy day. Yeah. <laughs> it was an insane day. I was in the grocery store, you know, trying yeah. to stockpile like everybody else. Mm-hmm. But I realized then I would not have survived the apocalypse because <laughs> I ran into Ira Madison the Third, oh. who's another podcaster yeah. uh-huh. who I love. Sure. And and we're chatting right about oh this is so crazy. We look in each other's carts and we both have just stockpiled kombucha. <laughs> and we're like this is what we like the end of the world and we're not even getting. We like the Trader like, Joe's and. In- on Hyperion? Yes. Yeah. We're the Trader Joe's in Hollywood. Yeah. And we're like, oh, the kombucha. <laughs> this will save me. <laughs> uh, this is a live wire house party. We're talking to Lacey Mosley. Uh, she's uh, one of the regulars on a Black Lady Sketch show. She also has a great podcast called The Scam Goddess Podcast. Um, well, in season two of a Black Lady Sketch show, you are in a particular sketch where you, the premise is you're twerking and <gasps> oh, a guy is so getting funny. very um, bored. With the twerking, he's getting very, he's getting sleepy. I don't want to give away the reveal, but let's just say oh, he's yeah. not super interested. And you keep upping your twerk game. I have so many questions about this. One, did you actually know all of these different dance moves and versions of twerking that you're breaking out? And also physically, what was it like to do that sketch? Because just the part that made it onto screen looks exhausting. Yeah. And I'm sure there was like five extra hours of twerking that didn't get in there. Oh yeah, let's talk. Probably around more fourteen hours. Oh my god! Um, oh my god. It was a long day. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> and uh, I love that sketch so much. Obviously, I can't say too much. I don't want to give it away. Sure. But it was like I lost four pounds on set that day just because mm. it was just twerking all day. And some of the moves I knew already. And there was a choreographer who, oh gosh, forgive me. I wish I could remember her name. But she does like Beyonce's choreography. She's like so fantastic mm. and talented. Um, but she was teaching me new moves like in between sets setups and stuff so there was a lot going on <laughs> did they ask, i was very tired did was there like did you were you part of the writing of that sketch uh, how did you end up with that because there's a number you know obviously there's an, a cast mm-hmm. did they like did everyone draw like draw straws yeah and you got like <laughs> the short one so they're like all right Lacey, get to it <laughs> well so and this wraps up the other question that you asked um when my show florida girls got uh canceled a black lady sketch show ended up reaching out kind of um in the 12th hour and being like hey we want you like come mm. and so I flew back. I was doing a job in Atlanta uh, for Shaquille O'Neal. And I flew back and literally got off the plane and got 300 pages worth of sketches. (gasps) And the Uh. way that we... And then and in two hours, they were like, we're going to get on the phone and talk about your character for interstitials. It it all happened so fast. So I'm like in the Uber just like reading just as much as I can. And um, you audition for the sketches. So I had to audition for the twerk sketch on Zoom. So I was literally like doing back bends on my couch (laughs) and like trying to twerk and like somehow fit it in the camera um but you're already to people who do you're already <laughs> a cast fans. member though right like you're a you cast member of the show auditioning yeah. against the wow. other cast members for these particular roles mm-hmm. wow yeah and a lot of stuff had already been assigned so there was only a few that you know there were approximately 21 sketches that were up for grabs so yeah i you know shout out to people who do only fans i don't know how y'all managed to twerk <laughs> into like a camera this small like <laughs> i was really hitting the angles uh but yeah that's how it happened and i ended up doing a lot of physical stuff in uh this season and realized like physical comedy is a big part of what I do and it was really fun. You're an excellent physical comedian. Like I I, oh, I don't you. associate that necessarily straight up with improv because improv, you know, you can't because physical comedy is so practiced, but it's really mm-hmm. it was amazing to watch that sketch. I can't wait for the world <laughs> to see it. It's really yeah. something else. <laughs> I haven't even seen it, guys. Y'all have seen it. I haven't. Oh. I'll, so forward, I'm I'll forward you the it. screener from HBO. They're very actually I don't think it'll work. They're very secretive about yes, these things. They are. Hey, we gotta take a real quick break, but we're gonna be back in a moment with Lacey Mosley. She's on a black lady sketch show and we want to talk about the scam goddess podcast too when we come back from this short break here on the live wire Mm -hmm. house party welcome back to the live wire house party from prx i'm luke burbank at my house elena passarello is at her place and we are talking to Lacey mosley from a black lady sketch show as well as the scam goddess podcast before the break we were talking about a sketch that you're in in this new season Lacey. Uh, where your character is is twerking and uh, it's super funny, it's super physical for you. But then at the end of the sketch, there's a kind of a, a series of visual jokes that also mm-hmm. then have a, 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 a certain, I, I guess you could say, they have a message to them. 
You know, there's yes. one point where there's oh, like, right. I'm just watching the sketch, I'm laughing, and then all of a sudden, there's a commentary about black women's needs and how white feminism has let down black women historically. And I was curious about the way that you, when making this show, how you guys sort of balance being funny with also really trying to say stuff that's real and meaningful. Yeah, I mean, one of the great things about a black lady sketch show is um, that that it is written in all black woman writers room where they do have the insight and they don't have to then explain right. certain things to people who may not be familiar with them. There's so much freedom and creativity there. Um, and I think that it's wonderful that Robin Thede has created so many fun opportunities that maybe do educate or maybe do say something poignant at the end, but in a way that's, you know, palatable. And, and we always say it's funny because it's true. So it's like when you see these things and they're brought to you in this manner you're like oh this is hilarious but it's also hilarious because mm -hmm. it, hist historically and contextually it's yeah. sad and true um but what you won't see on a black lady sketch show is um making fun of trauma which i really have appreciated i mean with everything that's happening with black lives matter and just like you know black people and policing in general like you're never going to see jokes like that mm -hmm. where it's at the expense of black folks and their pain mm -hmm. but you know they try to make jokes that are uplifting things that do need to change mm -hmm. and where we can all laugh but then be like oh well well, you know, that's actually a really good point. So mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Um, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the Scam Goddess podcast. How did this thing get started? Like, were you just somebody who had been scammed, were fascinated with scams? Like, how did you end up hosting this show? Yeah, the whole podcast is a scam. Um, it's a <laughs> <laughs> it's a comedy show. And um, at the time when I was pitching a comedy podcast kind of around, everyone was like, well, we're inundated with potty comedy podcasts. And, you know, you're not really famous. So, like, we don't really get the draw, you know. And then so with true crime and stuff, I realized that there's so much true crime and not enough true con, which mm -hmm. I think is more fun because right. you will listen to an episode and there's not going to be like some nice lady getting murdered. Mm -hmm. You right. know, it's going to be yeah. <laughs> right. people losing money. Right. You know, sometimes there's something dark, but we try to stay Stay away from the darkness but you're gonna have a good time you can laugh at these criminals and you know their fumbles and and what they do so we wanted to have a fun podcast and everything about it's been a scam like <laughs> we were spotify's pick of the year in the business category in 2020. yeah right and everybody so was great. like business <laughs> and i was like yeah the business of robbery what y'all talking about okay <laughs> like rob robbers were like one of the few people who didn't get a stimulus package and they needed a stimmy how you gonna rob people when they at home <laughs> you know let's think about that it was one think of the first that. industries to go down yeah. was mugging yeah. it was <laughs> Nobody was out and about. Um, no one was traveling. How am I supposed to break in your house and steal your Kim. things? You know, so support the robbers. Um. One of the things that you that, that you talk about on the podcast a lot is you want people to send in their scams, but you also want them to send in their like retired scams. Mm -hmm. This is because I guess you want to talk about stuff, but you're not trying to actively will get people in trouble and also what promote actual scams that people could then use on other people. Right. <laughs> yes, we always say we don't want to fumble your bag. You know what I mean? Right. So if you're still running the con, don't send it in because then, you know, other people might catch wind. You know, the, right. the market might be saturated. Like, we want you to be completely done with its statute of limitations. And there have been emails I've had to delete because I was like, I do not want, like... <laughs> The F, the B, and the I knocking right. on my door asking for tips. No thanks. I don't. Like I'm, I, I'm not trying to like, uh, you know, nominate myself to be on your show. But let me tell you, my mom, Susie Burbank, wrote the book on scams. You name it, Ooh, coloring right. contests. It, in our town, there was like a grocery store that would like you could color like a paper bag at Thanksgiving, and they'd give you like ten bucks. She had my sisters color in like. 50 paper bags taking them to every single grocery store in our, <laughs> in our town it was a whole sweatshop i mean she would like go into the dairy department and find the milk that was going to expire and then like go make an offer like she just my mom was working it from every single angle which is part of why i love your show because you you really hear people on their grind you hear about you know people trying to hustle and you know figure it out yes Oh, we stand Ms. Burbank, okay? Right, Susie okay. Burbank. <laughs> we stand. Susie B. Like, and, right. And that's one thing that we adore is that for the most part, we're punching up. Like a mm -hmm. lot of the scams we talk about are, you know, capitalism, just in general, like right. how people are finding their way through this system that is very oppressive to people, especially when you aren't born with money or yeah. opportunities that other people have. So I love to see a good scam on daddy government because we all know after 2020, <laughs> daddy government went out for a pack of cigarettes and never came back. <laughs> we were like, daddy, nope. help us. <laughs> <laughs> We've been giving you money all this time, right. Daddy, and you right. nothing. It's gone. <laughs> We're talking to Lacey <laughs> Mosley. Lacey is on a Black Lady sketch show and also has the Scam Goddess podcast. And you are on iCarly. 
on the, mm-hmm. the reboot of this beloved Nickelodeon show, Amanda Cosgrove's yes. show that was just like um, kids that are my daughter's age. It's just burned in their brain. Were you, did you grow up watching iCarly? I did. And it's really surreal to be on it because obviously I never would have imagined that, you know, in a million years that I would be. But um, what's fun about iCarly is, is like the original iCarly is so camp. Mm -hmm. It's so Mm -hmm. ridiculous. It's so fun and light. And I think that the writers have done a fantastic job of keeping the heart of what iCarly is and how camp and funny it is. But also, you know, these people are millennials. They're adults now. And so it it is a more of an adult flavor, but it still retains the heart of the original show. And the cast is fantastic. I love Miranda, Jerry, Nathan, Jordan, mm-hmm. Triplett. They're all, or Jaden, excuse me. They're all fantastic and very sweet, and work is really fun. That's Whoa. great. It's amazing to think about L- young Lacey Mosley in Dallas, you know, <laughs> being held back from that Barbizon contract Can't by her Barbizon. protective mother, <laughs> watching iCarly on TV, and then it's like blink your eyes and you're on iCarly. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really fun. Okay, uh, because you're a featured player on a Black Lady Sketch Show, and because you're also an expert on all things sketchy Mm -hmm. as the host of the podcast Scam Goddess, Lacey, we wanted to get your expert opinion on a little game that we're calling What's Sketchier? Ooh, yes. I mean, there's nothing (laughs) sketchier than OPP. Which I, I, don't think we, I don't think we have to. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> we'll just leave that there for public radio. Right. Basically, how this is going to work, Elena has got a series of, uh, of scenarios and different kinds of things. And we would like, Lacey Mosley, your expert opinion on what is sketchier. OK? Yes. All right, Elena, take it away. OK, number one, which is sketchier. A person who uses aliases, like that guy on your podcast that I listened to who had like 16 different aliases and a fake Irish accent and when yes. you were doing the thing with Nicole Byer. Is that sketchier or is a person whose name turns up zero search results on Google sketchier? Ooh, I'm going to have to go with just even you referencing Angus. I got to go Angus. with several names because <laughs> yeah. if you have if you've scrubbed yourself from the Internet, it is a little sketch not to have a footprint. But I understand the privacy. But if you have several names, that means all you do is run cons and grifts and you are <laughs> mm-hmm. you are constantly having to change your identity and move town. Yep. Like if I see you and every time you got a stick and a bandana and you're moving off to a new city yeah. like that's sketchy. If you're burning through identities, it's not a, right. not a great sign. All right. The, th- the thing that got me about that episode, which I hope everybody listens to, is that the aliases that he picked were so flamboyant. It was like mm-hmm. Angus Jocko Ferguson the Seventh. <laughs> it's like no, like Jim West, you know. Like, no, right. Like, and how do you even remember that? You got people no. calling Angus right. Fernway. Yeah. Like, like, you're, how are you Fernway. turning around and remembering that these are your names? Like, it's no. so good. Okay, number two. Uh, which is sketchier, someone trying to sell you a Gucci bag in a parking lot or an Uber driver who doesn't follow the directions that come up on the app? Uber driver at 100%. If yeah. I'm selling you, you know, parking lot purses, mm-hmm. you know what you're getting. It's yeah. pretty straightforward. If the yeah. Gucci came out of my trunk and I'm looking side to side, you know, as we make this transaction, like we all know what's happening. Yeah. But if an Uber driver is over here tricking me and going out of his way and taking all these different turns, now you're you're taking something professional where I had an expectation on what was yeah. going to happen and mm-hmm. you're scamming me. So, you know, I like an upfront scam, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm all, I, I want like I don't want to make it awkward, but I want to say, no offense. I promise you, the computer knows how to get there better than you do, sir. Right, <laughs> right. Like, no, this Absolutely. is faster. I'm like, no, there's a lot of a lot of software behind this route that it wants us to take. Okay, I'm kind of going with the software on this. Exactly. Like Waze has come up with so many amazing things. I, I love Waze, but also sometimes Waze is a little too much. It'll be like, mm-hmm. drive down this alleyway and through this latest backyard. Carry yeah. a spoon with it, and you're going to save 30 seconds on your trip. Like, <laughs> so. Okay. All right. Number three, which is sketchier, a person who says that their ex was so toxic or a person with zero female friends? Ooh, this is a hard one. Because on one hand, when men say their exes are toxic, I'm always like, what did you do to that lady? Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> she was so toxic. Like, I, I kept lying to her and then she would be mad. It was like, come on, girl, you know I'm a liar when you met me. Like, right. what, you know? Like, <laughs> so that's that's hard. And then wait, what was the other one? A um, person who has zero female friends. 
Mm. I'm gonna have to go with the person who has zero female friends, just huh. because if you don't like women enough to have one that you'll talk to, like that's a big red flag. Maybe your ex really was toxic, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but if you have it's no true. female friends, we already know you. You weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I think that's definitely more sketchy. Okay, uh, number four, which is sketchier: essential oils or Gwyneth's Goop Empire. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, that's hard. This candle smells like my, you know. <laughs> Maybe it does. It's not like I'm gonna have an opportunity to check, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, oh, that's so hard because Goop is such a. You know what? I'm gonna have to go with Goop. Sorry, Gwenny. Love you, mm-hmm. sis. But at least with essential oils, yeah. Okay. Maybe I may have bought like 65 packs to sell to my friends and family, and now I'm just. I got oil for the rest of my life. Sure. <laughs> but at least if you rub some peppermint oil under your nose, aren't you refreshed? You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. So at right. least you're still getting something. And with goop, I don't know, with their ties to some sketchy things that are happening right now with the orgasm stuff, I'm just going to have to say, <laughs> sorry, Gwenny girl. Yeah. I still love you. Still love you. you Essential some- oils are cheaper too, which is, mm-hmm. you know, like, yeah. Are, you can, they, I mean, are, you can patch ahead. it up with Gwyneth when you see her at the Trader Joe's. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Buying kombucha. Right. Right. All right. Number five, which is sketchier, a roommate who never comes out of their room or a roommate who never goes into their room? (laughs) Ooh, definitely. Oh, that's hard. Because if you're not Mm -hmm. going into your room, what you hiding in there, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But if you're staying in your room, you write manifestos? I'm confused. (laughs) Um, That's that's a hard one. (gasps) I'm going to go with the one who stays in the room. Because at least if the roommate's out of the room, we know what they're up to. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe they're they're yeah. subletting their room for someone <laughs> and without our knowledge, which is sketchy. But, you know, better than staying in there holed up night and day. Behind closed doors. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Although that's preferable in some ways because then, they, you know, they probably aren't bothering you. You know, right. like they're not hogging that's the couch true. if they're in. <laughs> but it's definitely right. sketchier. <laughs> okay. The penultimate question, which is sketchier, the cash app or Craigslist? Ooh, that's hard because we all know Cash App is the app for crime. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's sketchy over there, yeah. and that's why we love it. Money comes quick, you know, hard to get refunded. Um, basically, Western Union on your phone if you need something just real sketchy uh, to send money. Um, <laughs> But then Craigslist, Craigslist is an OG of the fraud mm-hmm. and scam department. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know how many times I've walked down a dark alley and I was like, maybe I'll get murdered or maybe I'll have a great job opportunity. They said, meet him on this alley. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, this lady just ran past me screaming, but you know, I'm going to still see if I can get the job, you know? Um, <laughs> we have to go with Craigslist. It's an old timey, yeah. ancient mm-hmm. scam. Yeah. And I love it. I yeah. love that for Craigslist. It's like a steampunk scam. Right. It's so right. old timey. <laughs> Okay, this is a hard one. We're ending with a really Ooh. hard one. Here we go. Which is sketchier, Lacey Mosley? A call from an unknown number on your cell phone or mm-hmm. a 3 a.m. text from your ex on your cell phone that says, you up, question mark. Ooh. Which is sketchier. Okay, at least with the 3 a.m. you up, we all know what, what's <laughs> yeah. going on there. I think that's pretty clear. Unknown numbers, they're always calling with some kind of scam. And sometimes they'll be le- like legitimate or believable. They'll have just enough information to get mm-hmm. you um, to the point where now we have scam likely on our phones, right. uh, which is funny that it's coming from Apple. Like they're not scamming us too. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, Look, we need you to keep your money for our scam. So we are going to warn you about these scams. Um, I'm going to go unknown number because at mm. least 3 a.m. text from the right. X, we both know what that means. Okay, that's not a scam. That's an opportunity. Am yeah, I up or not? It sounds like for you, you, and I agree with you here. It's it's less scammy if both people know what's right. going on. Mm-hmm. If the Absolutely. if the exchange, even if the exchange is shady, it's not a scam or it's not sketchy if everybody kind of understands what's at stake. Exactly, exactly. Because oh. then it's like we're all participating willingly right. versus being really duped. So right. yeah, gotcha. we like ethical scams over there. Ethical scams. <laughs> Wise yeah. words from the scam goddess herself, Lacey Mosley. <laughs> Uh, you can also see Lacey on the new season of A Black Lady Sketch Show on HBO. Mm-hmm. Lacey, thank you so much for coming on the Live Wire House Party. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This was so much fun. Yes. Hey, Lacey, let me do this, too, uh, just so we have another version for our edit. I'm going to say goodbye to you in case we don't end up using the um, the quiz just for time so we have options. Mm-hmm. So just one more. I'll just say um, 
Lacey Mosley from the Scam Goddess podcast and also a Black Lady sketch show on HBO. Lacey, thank you so much for coming on the Livewire House Party. Thank you for having me. This was a blast. You guys are amazing. Thanks, Lace. That was so, that was so fun. Good. That was Anytime so fun. Anytime you want to host this show because you don't have enough jobs, <laughs> just tell our producers. I think they were they were going like, wait, why is Luke the host and not Lacey? Because you have you have charisma to spare. My goodness. 